What did he say? No, no, no. Don't worry. Let me. Good thing. Are you here? Try. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Please. We have five minutes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Zube. Thank you for having me here. Um, let me just load these poems quickly. Just a minute. All right. Mama, please, where's your charger? I'm telling you, like, I'm going to drag this boy. Yeah, I'm because this is not what you feel like you come and do. So I have Just ima and I told him I don't have um, a laptop. I'm going to share quickly. This is what you want me to do. I don't um, have a laptop. Just imagine. The first one. Um, I can, I'll just say, I'll be like, I'm not doing it. It's a retrospective poem that I wrote um, for the month of February, a little exercise that I have undertaken. So this is February. You need to be fine. February. In Kampala, summer lasts all year long. My last week in my long game as a result of this. On Valentine's Day, I stay in bed, cozy inside my new mosquito net. Nothing else matters but this stillness. I'm in love with my gentle and become. There's a woman on the phone with me every day. And every day I feel the waves of a love begin to set in this city's heat. Sending you gentle, belly kisses, I say. She laughs. In the mornings in my bedroom on the back of a motorcycle, the city stretches around me as it yawns. I think of possibility. She and I, my body is willing to resume being an entrance. I remain a boy, a body sprawling, and at the edges of myself, I swear to you. I see flowers, buddy. Moving swiftly along. The second poem is titled If My Father Were to Speak at Last. Son, I never imagined anything I planted on my way here would grow as tall as you did. Let glory return to God. What is your poetry about? I don't think I understand most of it. Teach me language, son, so I make sure you're behind the curtains of my life. You say you've let go of love recently. After your mother took you, I looked for God for 20 years. Something in our blood is an ever-spinning compass. I can't tell you how many times I returned to that moment, how many times losing you was a barrel Babe, please, how do you copy this thing again? I'm trying to... On your way to Lusaka, you tell okay, me okay, don't worry. that even termites are building to what happened. I want you to look for God the same way. I want you to look for home. Where was I right now? Okay. And lastly, um, a short poem titled Akasala by the Creation. Akasala by the Creation. This is how I become impossible. I ink myself into a lie on God's lips. When I return to my mother's people, the streets are paved with a song about me. They say, give me a body I can hold against the light and not flinch. I practice how to hold the night captive and call myself Mganga Yakisi. It is dark. I am no longer afraid, for I have the night in my pocket. Oh, I belong inside the night's pocket, any night. Any kind of night, any kind of night that doesn't wince at a black boy's body. I become improbable, smoke to those who hurt. I practice how to marvel at my compassion, call myself expanse. I am no longer passing by. I reside. Those who made me meant it. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Kinga for that beautiful poetry recitation. Thank you so much. Um, all right, next I would present Obari Gomba, Dr. Obari Gomba, to read his work. Thank you very much, Dr. Hello. I think I think you're 
Okay. I think you're muted, Dr. Uh, okay. Gomba. Not only tech person, project manager slash baker uh, slash. Dr. Gomba, I think you're muted. For like the non technical aspect of tech. Dr. Gomba, are you there? I'm muted. Okay, I, okay. Yeah. I think you're unmuted now. He's mute. Let me. Um, we can't hear you. And a reminder to everybody, everybody else, to put up their mics so we can hear the readers clearly. Thank you so much. Dr. Gomba, are you there? He's muted. Muted, yes. Okay. Is it other than I was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to But where do you stay? Like the location, location, then you get to work. Yes, there's no I think I think you're unmuted now, Dr. Bamba. I think you're good now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I can hear you now. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I've been trying to unmute everything. Oh. All right. Uh, let me let me begin by thanking you for putting this event like this together and extending the invitation to me. Uh, I'm reading from Potakot in Nigeria, and I'm reading from a collection of essays, largely satirical essays uh, that I've called Free Troubles. So I'm going to read one short essay called One More Reason. One More Reason. I will not bother you with the origin of critical race theory, CRT. I'll give you a pretty textbook definition as if I intend to make you like it. Let me give you one more reason to hate CRT. No coach interpretation is perfect. CRT claims to be perfect without respecting the world's established pinnacle of perfection which is indeed the whiteness of things. I'm just kidding. I should rather say that contrary to what many Caucasian Americans have been made to believe, CROT does not deny the innate goodness or greatness of the Caucasian race. The instruction of whiteness and the atrocities that have been inflicted on others in the name of whiteness and on the terms of whiteness and for the profits or privileges of whiteness. The problem is not the manner of CROT. It is rather inclined. Are we there? I say, when you're talking about it will bring your work to the dust. We can hear you, doctor. Oh my God. I hear you, sir. Okay. See, you try to be powerful. It is rather that the are inclined to fiercely yes, define you whiteness you because they cannot me. find any other tenor or texture oh my for God. their presence oh or agency God. outside the construction of whiteness. White America cannot afford to let each children know Please, about is it. My internet it demonizes CROT for shining the light of white darkness. History permits the whiteness of America because the grand narratives they love to tell each children cannot stand the light of truth. Okay, History that since, um, this thing, since everybody is in the whiteness of America, reveals a huge devil of whiteness, which reinvented blackness as a categorization for Africans to deflect attention from the cruel whiteness of things. Or, to justify the whiteness of cruelty. If you must know why white America is always on edge when African Americans talk about white privilege, it is because there is no white American that has not profited from the marks of the beast. Whereas profiting from the sins of the father's days, the side table, the TV stand, even the TV. I never saw anyone stop to look at these items, but the people who wanted them must have been watching. The furniture disappeared every morning before sunrise. Last night, Adrian tried to distract Frasier, our dog, while I packed the last of our clothes into the gray green suitcase Frasier knows from every time we've left him behind. Adrian pulled the excited faces and he made the excited noises and he threw Frasier's favorite rubber ball down the empty hallway, but none of it worked. Frasier wouldn't leave my side. 
he made small whimpering sounds. I thought maybe we would put down roots here too. I wheel our luggage and Adrian carries the crate with Fraser in it to a busy corner. I hail a cab by lifting my arm into the cold air and shouting, Taxi! It would be quicker to request a ride on my phone, but I'm not leaving New York without flagging down one final cab the way they do it in the movies. Cape Town looks dry from the plane. I try to point this out to Adrian beside me, but I'm conscious of speaking very slowly and slurring my words. I'm heavily sedated with beta blockers and sleeping pills. Fly with large ivory wings and a long white robe that swirled while I soared above clouds. I wanted to dwell beyond this world, in what I imagined to be God's abode, somewhere up the sky, vast, lustered with gold, replenished with laughter, and an array of angels chiming hallelujah to God. In picture books, I saw illustrations of these angels, all of them light-skinned with silk blonde hairs that sank to shoulder level. I didn't look like them, but still I did not watch. I wanted to be an angel. God's angel. Our then house help, Auntie Hope, often told me the story of a girl named Faith. Faith wanted to be an angel. She longed to fly. One day, Faith swallowed the star and prayed the Lord's prayer. God blessed her with entrancing wings, glossed with the glory of the bullets. My vehemence rekindled each time Auntie Hope told me the story with an earnest composure. It never seeped into a cliché. I wondered how fate got Francis Moore was at his office in Clarence House at 9 a.m. after he yanked it away from his charging cable and squinted at the glow of the screen. It was just past midnight and I had seven missed calls from a withheld number. The landline stopped. The landline stopped ringing. Who still calls the landline anyway? I'd even taken the number off my website. I sat up and reached for my dream journal on the bedside table. I had to write it all down before I began to forget it. It started as a dream, and like every dream I'd had for months, it took a sudden twist and turned into a nightmare. Tyson, fucking Tyson. But really, who wouldn't open?